Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be exploring an example of exercising the envelope procedure for calculating wind loads, and we're going to be referencing ASE 722 along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we have a lot of given information here, so um, as I go through this, you might want to pause the video and take some time to write all of this down. So we're being told that for the enclosed building, with KE and KZT equal to one, and your basic wind speed is 110 miles per hour, and exposure category D to do the following two things. First, we wanna compute the interior and exterior design pressures for all of the zones. And then number two, we wanna compute the east-west base shear force based on exterior wall pressures, okay? So let's scroll down and take a look at the figure we're given, okay? So here um, we have two diagrams. We have the north elevation view, which is this, and then we have the plan view, and we have a little north arrow down here, okay? So when we say north elevation, this, this uh, diagram that we're looking at right here, that's this face. Uh, the face of the plan view here, okay? So in the north elevation view, we see that the width of the building is 50 feet, and this 50 feet is the same as this 50 feet here, okay? Um, we have a gable roof, okay? And we see it has slope angles theta on both sides. They're the same slope angle. And the center line of this gable roof is gonna be right in the middle at the ridge, and uh, so that's gonna define us uh, at 25 feet and 25 feet, and that's reflected over here. This is the, the ridge line um, on the plan view, and then this is the ridge line on the uh, north elevation view. Um, we see that the height of the building is 19 and a half feet from the ground up to the eave, and then from the eave up to the ridge, we have a one foot dimension. And um, on the plan view, we see that the long dimension of the building is 100 feet, okay? So the plan dimensions are 50 feet by 100 feet, and then the eave height is 19 and a half feet. The ridge height is uh, 20 and a half feet, if you look at it from there. And then if you look at the direction the wind is blowing, we see the wind is blowing from the west to the east, okay? from west to east, and the wind is blowing on the long direction of the building, all right? So again, maybe pause the video, sketch all of this down, write all of this down, make sure you know what you're looking at, all right? So um, let's go ahead and go to the solution. I'm gonna scroll down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up ASE 722, and I'm gonna look at figure 28.3-1. That's gonna be on page 295 of ASC 722. And we wanna notice that we have load case one, okay? If you look at the, the top of that page, load case one deals with the wind blowing um, along the long side of the building, okay? The next thing we need to go ahead and figure out is what is that roof slope angle theta? So I'm gonna say theta is the roof slope angle and we can calculate it just using basic trigonometry. If we look at this uh, drawing here, we know that the center line of the ridge, the high point is right in the middle of that 50 feet. So that means that this horizontal dimension is 25 feet. Here's that 25 feet there. And the ridge height above the eave is one foot. So all we need to do is just say theta is equal to the arc tangent of one foot over 25 feet. And if you punch that through with me and your calculator, you're going to see that that's 2.29 degrees. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a note of this. This is less than five degrees. Now, why am I making a note of this? Well, uh, if you take a look at the table in the middle of figure 28.3-1, that's the table in the middle of page 295 of AAC7, um, we have load case one, and the values we're going to end up being interested in for the GCPF uh, coefficients are going to be from the row 
that has the roof angle from zero to five degrees. So that's why I'm making a deliberate note of that right now, okay? Um, let's go ahead and get the mean roof height. What's the mean roof height? Is it 19 and a half feet or is it 20.5 feet? Well, it's just 20 feet, okay? How do I know that? Well, again, the eave height is the 19.5 feet. The total height up to the ridge is 20.5. So we need to remember what's the definition of the mean roof height. Well, that's the height right here, okay? That's this height right here, that's H, okay? And so um, what you basically do is you just say the average of 19 and a half plus 20 and a half, and that gives you 20 feet right there, okay? Now that you know what the mean roof height is, you can go to table 26.10-1, uh, and you can get KZ is equal to 1.08, okay? Now that's for exposure D, exposure category D, which that was, that's what was given to us in the problem statement. Now what we can do is go ahead and calculate our uh, velocity pressure, Q sub H, that's 0 0.00256, KZ, KZT, KE, uh, V squared, okay? And we're, hopefully we remember how to do that from uh, some previous knowledge. So that's 0 0.00256 uh, times 1.08 times one times one. Those two ones were given to us times 110 miles per hour squared. And if you wanna punch this along with me, um, hopefully you'll get 33.5 PSF as I did, okay? So that's our velocity uh, pressure. Now we are ready to start getting the actual design pressures, right? So if you remember, what are those design pressures? We, we need an interior and an exterior design pressure. So the interior, P-I-N-T, is equal to Q-H-K-D, GCPI. I'm going to start with that one, the interior pressure. Okay. Now, what is KD? KD is a factor that depends on the kind of structure you have. And so that's going to be equal to 0.85. And if you need to know where to find that, that's going to be in table 26.1-1 of ASE 722. What about GCPI? GCPI is going to be equal to plus and minus 0 0.18 and that's going to be from table 26.13-1 so if you need to pause the video flip some pages around in your ASC 7 and make sure you know where we're getting these values from so when we substitute these values in we get the interior pressure of the building is 33.5 psf times 0.85 times plus and minus 0 0.18. And so when we crank all this through, we'll get a positive and negative 5.13 PSF. So that's our interior pressure, okay? Now don't worry, I'm gonna draw us a nice diagram that shows this here in a minute, but I just like to get all the calculations ready first, then we're gonna draw it out, okay? So this is part of our answer. This is our interior pressure that develops um, in an enclosed building due to uh, the wind blowing on the exterior, okay? Now, what about the exterior pressures, okay? What about the exterior pressures? Let's make a note here. Um, I'm gonna say for external pressures, we are going to use figure 28.3-1. And remember, we're looking at load case one, okay? Um, so the, the, what we're gonna do is quite simple. We're gonna extract those GCPF values from the table in the middle of page 295, okay? So before we do that, let's go ahead and write the general um, 
P-E-X-T, the external pressure formula. That's Q-H, K-D, and then that's times G-C-P-F, okay? And like we said before, uh, G-C-P-F is obtained from figure 28.3-1. Now, there's not just going to be one of these values. I'll put a comma here. I'm going to say for each zone on load case one, okay? So here's what I'm going to do to, um, to help us keep track of things. I'm going to make a little table here, and I'm going to call this zone, okay? And I'm going to make a top row here, and we're, we're looking at uh, load case one now, okay? So I'm going to say zone one, two, three, four, one E, two E, three E, and four E, okay? And I'm going to make another row underneath here. This is going to be GCPF that I'm going to get from that table. And I'm going to make another row here. This is going to be P-E-X-T in P-S-F, okay? So let's get these GCPF values from the table. So hopefully you're following along with me. Look at page 295 of ASC 722. So I'm going to go straight across here for zone one. I've got 0.4. For zone two, I've got a GCPF of negative 0.69. And then just moving across, negative 0.37, negative 0.29. Uh, zone 1E is going to be positive 0.61. 2E, negative 1.07. 3E is negative 0.53. And 4E is negative 0.43. So uh, if you notice, there's only two positive values. One, zone 1 and zone 1E give us positive GCPF values. And if you remember, positive values indicate a compressive pressure acting on a surface and a negative value indicates a suction pressure acting on a particular surface. Okay. So here's my next question. How do we calculate P exterior or external? Well, we substitute in each of these GCPF values into this equation. And if you remember, QH, it is what it is. We're, we're using um, the Q value, the velocity pressure at the mean roof height. We calculated that earlier as 33.5 PSF and KD is 0.85, okay? So I can come down here and do a little scratch work and say PEXT is um, 33.5 PSF times 0 0.85 times GCPF, and so that's going to be uh, 28.5 times GCPF. So all you got to do now is you multiply each of these GCPF values here in red by 28.5, and that'll populate this row here. So I'm going to change colors here, and I'm going to crank these through one at a time. So maybe pause the video, make sure you're calculating the same thing I am, but I get 11.4, I then get negative 19.7, I get negative 10.6, I get negative 8.3, I get uh, positive 17.4, I get a negative 30.5, I get a negative 15.1, and I get a negative 12.3 and these are pressure values in PSF. So these are the exterior pressures on the different zones of our building. All right. So now that I have all of these values, now it would be beneficial for me to maybe start drawing a nice figure or a couple of figures to go along with um, with what I calculated, okay? So, I mean, we have the answer for most of what we were looking for so far. We just have to make some sense of it, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna first redraw the north elevation, okay? So I'm gonna draw it here. So this is my north elevation. 
make a note down here, north elevation, okay? So my north elevation is gonna have these different uh, pressures acting on it. Now, where are these pressures? Well, this side right here is zone 1E, okay? And you need to be looking at the 3D figure on page 295 to help you out. This side over here is zone 4E, okay? And then the zones up at the top, that's 2E and 3E. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pressures. Uh, I'm starting with, um, again, the north elevation. I'm going to take these pressures here, 1E, 2E, 3E, 4E, and I'm going to draw them on this figure here, okay? So the way this is going to look is we have... This pressure here. So what is that value? Well, that's the 1E pressure, 17.4 PSF. 17.4 PSF, okay? And then if I keep going around, and I draw all my pressures, this is also a uniform pressure. This is 30.5 PSF. And why is it pointing away from the roof? Well, it's a negative, which means it's causing suction. It's pointing away from the surface, okay? What about on 3E? Well, I've got another suction pressure, and these pressures are acting perpendicular to the surface, okay? So this is 15.1 PSF. And then on 4E, I've got a suction pressure here, and that's 12.3 PSF. So these pressures are all, should be acting normal to the surface they're acting on or perpendicular to the surface, okay? Now, that's the north elevation. What about, uh, what's the dimension of this? Well, if you remember from the previous video, uh, this north elevation, this is for a distance little a, for a distance little a longitudinally, okay? What about the elevation beyond little a, okay? We haven't calculated little a yet, but we're going to in a second, okay? What about the um, elevation beyond little a? So, so this is gonna be for a distance of 100 feet minus little a. Okay, so I'm going to redraw uh, this building section. Okay, redraw the building section. There's my gable roof. Okay, now what are these zones? Well, this zone here is just zone one without the capital letter E. This zone over two over here is zone four. And then I've got a zone two and a zone three here, okay? So the pressures acting on these zones are these, these four zones here, and it's these four pressures here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch those on here in, uh, in a blue color. So these are all uniform pressures. This is 11.4 PSF, zone two, is uh, a suction pressure of 19.7 PSF. Zone three, also suction, so pointing away from the roof, that's 10.6 PSF. And zone four is also suction, 8.3 PSF. Okay, so, um, what about, the, those are the exterior pressures, right? What about the internal pressure? Well, the internal pressure is the same all inside of this building, okay? So that internal pressure, P-I-N-T, that's the plus and minus 5.13 PSF. So what does that look like? Well, what you can do is you can draw double pressure arrows acting on all of the interior surface of the building, okay? Now what some people do, because this, this gets quite cluttered as you can see, 
Some people just don't even draw the interior pressure arrows. So if you don't want to draw the interior pressure arrows because it's getting, you know, very cluttered, that's totally fine. But this is just so you can see where it's acting, okay? It's positive or negative, could be positive or negative, all on the inside of your uh, interior surfaces. So this is P-I-N-T, again, plus and minus 5.13 PSF. Same interior pressure. I'm not gonna draw the vectors on, on the second drawing just to eliminate clutter, okay? Now, what about this distance A? We haven't calculated it yet, but we know how to calculate it, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say compute the longitudinal, longitudinal dimension A for zone E, okay? So um, that is described in sentences in the middle of page 295 of ASC 7. In my previous video, I gave you uh, an equation form of it. That's A equals the minimum of 0.1 L min. Oh, looks like my pencil battery is low, but that's okay, we'll keep going. 0.1 L min or 0.4 H. And so this will be the minimum of 0.1 times 50 feet or um, 0.4 times 20 feet. So the minimum of this, if you punch these through, is 5 feet. Um, it's got to be bigger than 0.04 L min, which is 2 feet and 3 feet. So we're going to say use A equals 5 feet. Now, if you look at load case 1, um, we're going to see that zone 1E has a length of what? Well, it has a length of 2A, which is 10 feet, okay? And we'll also make a note here that the exception is not applicable. All right, so um, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? Well, from here, we can um, really answer part two of the question, which had to do with the base shear, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do now. For part two to calculate the base shear, I'm gonna draw a plan view of my building with the wall pressures, okay? So this is the plan view of my building, all right? And I'm gonna have 90 feet here. And guess what this dimension is right here? This dimension, that's 2A, that's the 10 feet right there, okay? And, um, and then if I wanna put a north arrow here, there's my north arrow. So where, what, what are the pressures in this plan view? Well, let's, maybe let's go ahead and draw the ridge here too. There's the ridge. This is the plan view, okay? So in zone 1E and 4E, we're going to have these pressures here and here. These are the exterior pressures from the table we, we uh, wrote out a few minutes ago. There, this is the 17.4 PSF, and this is the 12.3 PSF, okay? Now, what about the 90-foot the length? Well, you're gonna have the exterior pressure on the 90-foot length here. That's the 11.4 PSF. draw this a little bit better and this is the 8.3 PSF okay and so if you want to um, help label some zones here this zone right here is 1e this is 4e and then that 90 foot length this is just regular zone 1 and regular zone 4 okay so here's the question now. How do we calculate the base shear force? 
okay? This is gonna be a force in pounds or kips. Well, we're gonna uh, use the external wall pressures and we're gonna calculate the force based on how these wall pressures are acting on a given area, okay? Remember, these are pressures, so it's, it's uh, acting over an area, right? So let's look at one zone at a time, okay? I'm gonna say capital V equals, all right? What is the area that this 17.4 PSF is acting over? Well, let's write it out. Let's say 17.4 PSF. Well, it's definitely acting over this 10 feet. That's one of the dimensions it's acting over. So it's times 10 feet. And then it's acting over the height of the wall. What's the height of the wall that the wind is blowing on? Well, that was the 19.5 feet from earlier, right? If we scroll on up, here's that 17.4 PSF. And look at that. It's acting on... 19.5 feet of wall, okay? Now, remember the mean roof height is 20 feet, but the wall height that that 17.4 PSF pressure is acting on is 19 and a half feet, all right? So that's the first term. So what do we do next? Well, we go one pressure zone at a time. Let's do the 11.4 next, okay? 11.4, we're gonna say plus 11.4 PSF. It's acting over 90 feet times 19.5 feet, okay? And then we're gonna wrap this equation around. We're gonna say plus 12.3 PSF times 10 feet times 19.5 feet. And then plus that last pressure zone, 8.3 feet. I mean, 8.3 PSF, not feet. 8.3 PSF is acting over 90 feet by 19.5 feet. And you know, you could have rewritten this any, you know, number of algebraic ways. You could factor out the 19.5 because you see the the building height is the same for, you know, all of these pressure zones. Regardless, when you crank this through, you should end up getting a value of about 40.37 kips, okay? So that is the base shear force. So what that means is that is a shear force that is um, acting at the base of your building due to the exterior wall pressures acting on that entire building, okay? So maybe uh, pause the video, rewind it, um, rewatch parts of it. This, this is kind of a lot. It's not that it's hard to calculate. It's kind of a, a lot for the mind to digest, especially if you're new to this. So rewatch this as much as you can. If you found this video helpful to you, please hit like and subscribe and be on the lookout for other videos like this. Thanks for watching.